Welcome back troglodytes to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglodyte's Guitar Show. Let's go ahead and do some traditional guitar hunting tonight. I don't know what we're going to see, let's just go ahead and click my feed. That's not the worst price in the world for one of these. I can't believe it, it's almost, almost been 10 years on these guys now. The Gibson Government series. Basically, the big middle finger for stealing their woods and whatnot, they used the rosewood that was confiscated by the government. They were basically billed as a collector's edition and thought to really raise in value very quickly. And yes and no, I don't remember the original retail price on these. It was a little bit before my time. It was just at like the very beginning of when I started to get into guitars. But if you want one of these, Series 1 is the way to go because they get the money green case. They're just so cool. I mean, this is actually very, very appropriately priced. But they haven't really skyrocketed in value, especially when you look at things like Noel Gallagher's J150 or the Adam Jones that was just released within a year and they're already at at least double retail value. I think the problem with these is they were not custom shop guitars and they just made too many of them because you got the Flying V's, you got the Explorers, you got the Les Paul and you got the SG. But it was a great way to uh, drum up some money because those were hot sellers. So $17.99, yeah, that's a fair price. But it did have a few dings, so you got to decide if you still want it. Like any type of cosmetic blemish on those really hurts the collectability factor. Looks like we got a Gibson Victory. You can check out either of my reviews and demos for more information on those. I'm pretty sure I've done pretty well every iteration on them. And whoa, whoa, whoa. See, this was the seller I couldn't think of a day or two ago until I was looking over the footage again. Oh, it's the acoustic room. How could I forget that name? So Les Paul Custom Harp Lady. I just like it because we get a green headstock. Now normally, I don't think that would look good, but it's a nice quilted maple veneer. The abalone inlay has a lot of green and blue to it. It works. It's not so dark that you don't see it, but it's still kind of blended in. So far, for one of these art guitars, this looks pretty good. You also get some abalone trim along the sides and the Grover Imperial pearl tip tuners. I feel like they should have ditched the plastic truss rod cover and swapped it in with a mother of pearl one that also says that then that'd be truly fancy oh and then we get to the body a bit of a letdown i mean when you have this i was expecting something explosive but eh, it's just just a nice flame top it's not a bad top by any means it just looks rather plain like I feel like this one needs a pick guard that's like wooden and engraved with like a fairy lady or something maybe do something a little bit more with the edges I mean it's a nice color green with the natural okay looking at it head on you get the harp lady inlay which if you don't know what that is it's this lady right here and she's standing on the chalices and there's vines and flowers and whatnot Kind of an interesting inlay. I would not say it's my favorite of the art guitar inlay schemes though, but it works well with this guitar, but ooh, I like that back. Not the best back I've seen, but I like it. I like it. Nice wood grainage. Oh, ha! it's an exclamation mark. You gotta be excited to look at this guitar. <laughs> I kind of want to buy it just for that. Dude, dude, check out my guitar. It's got this great headstock. Yeah, the top is pretty nice too, but check out the exclamation mark at the back. <laughs> oh, that's how guitar collecting's fun when you just, you know, find strange wood grain figurines. It's a very animated exclamation mark too. So how much does he want for this one? 10,000 bucks. That just seems to be what he sells most of his art guitars for. Not one I would personally be interested in now, but just based on all the guitars that we've been talking about this year, it's strange that 10,000 now seems cheap for a Gibson that's like a limited edition. When at one point in time I was like, God, oh, that's like three times the price I would ever pay for a guitar. The things I do for this YouTube channel to keep you guys entertained. <laughs> I have fun doing it and I think you guys enjoy watching the videos as well. That's why I keep making them. Ooh, that could be a potential buy right here. Les Paul Studio Limited Edition BFG Electronics. I don't think he's titled that properly. Wasn't this a uh, Guitar of the Week series where they did a gloss finished BFG? Now these aren't super popular on the used market simply because the whole point of a BFG is to have that scaly look with an interesting finish. When you 
finish the Bailey finished guitar. Yeah, there it is. I've seen this one before. Somebody shaved the neck finish off. But anyways, when you gloss up a BFG, it kind of loses some of its appeal. So this is a great player for somebody. How much do they want? 900 bucks? 800 oh, $100 with shipping. Maybe if you can haggle in free shipping. In today's market, a Les Paul Studio and a gloss finish, let alone being a limited edition and kind of having an interesting pickup layout, that's a good buy. I would suggest somebody checking that out, especially since it has a case. You can use my link in the description if you'd like to credit me with the sale. Next up, we've got one of these 60th anniversary SG Customs. I do have one of those if you're interested in purchasing it. I'm not sure if I'm going to do that review or not. I just, I don't like the sideways trams, but I did want to at least unbox them, and you can see them in this episode here. And oh no, what happened? <laughs> oh, you know, I had um, the Photoshop King, as he likes to be called on his email, Trues who did the Jared James Nichols video for us, predicting what ones he might have. He saw, I think it was this model or something very similar in a condition that looked kind of like this. I wonder if it's that same guitar that's being flipped. So in the case, we've got our TP6 tailpiece, which is the original for this model. You've got your harmonica bridge. Ooh, and the knobs. Those aren't quite correct for my Sparkle Top Deluxe, but they could be close enough to work. But this is a really rare guitar. You can check out my full review and documentation of one right here. It's got a spin-a-split switch, which was kind of interesting. And it had double cream pickups from the factory, but it was all black. So it looks like somebody has taken the finish off of this. I mean, it's like a, a $28 to $3,500 guitar in all original shape. So if you take off the finish, that is very fairly priced, especially if you want like a Pelham Blue SG. So what is our story here? Beautiful Gibson SG exclusive, all original hardware, pickups, knobs, and pick guard, including the brass nut that was replaced in the 80s. Yeah, that was the other cool thing about these. They had a brass nut. It says it needs a new wiring harness and a little love. Okay, so he's not very specific with our condition. Like, is the neck okay? Do the frets need work? I'm tempted to buy this just for the knobs, but they almost don't look vintage. Like they might not actually be the originals. It's kind of hard to tell in that photo. And it looks like we're missing a knob, so we might not even have our spin a split anymore. And this pickup ring does not look right. So is that even the original pickup? I mean, these would have the dirty fingers and I can see the double row of pole pieces, but that pickup ring does not look right. You see how it's all rounded over right here? Whereas normally it's very square. It's common for these to kind of age, not naturally, but just those pickups can be worth up to 800 bucks. So man, sh should I buy this and like do a fun project? I mean, it's even got a chainsaw case. That's worth like 300. So 300 plus, let's be conservative on the pickups, 400, 700 total. Just the husk of the SG should probably be worth 500, so that's 12. That's very fairly priced. However, if it needs any type of fret work or anything, you're gonna be out of luck. But this would be a great candidate to restore an original SG exclusive. I made him an offer on that. There's some potential that I could do with that. And I've got two more for you today. So this is one of the late 80s SG customs. I've had a few of them. Yeah, it's that same one that had that heel break that one time. These just don't pop up that often anymore. They're very cool guitars. You know, they've got some age to them, some natural patina. This one, it looks like, did it actually come from the factory stock with one of those? Generally, you don't find that, but I'm not seeing any like residue from a regular tailpiece. So if that's actually true, like I would actually want to verify that, make sure that is factory original. This is not that bad of a price for something like that. And thankfully, no breaks, cracks, or repairs, but these white finishes, they always get finished checking around the neck like that. That's no problem. Ooh, custom truss rod cover. Was this a custom order? Possibly. Yeah, that is a nice example. Only 4,000 bucks. Sounds kind of expensive, but a lot of people ask a lot more for those. And it's even got the original Bill Lawrence pickups. Mm, I'd want to see some photo documentation of that did they have that because it doesn't have the normal giant screws okay so that's one of the earlier ones that didn't use that 
And nice, they showed me everything I wanted to see except for the most important part. Like, they had this all torn apart, right? You can see something strange going on there, like another hole. They should have took this off to make sure there was no, like, holes underneath here. Generally, you'll see them kind of poking out the side anyways. So that may indeed be factory original. Kind of cool. And another one from the late 80s. This is the Slash era of Les Paul standards. He uses one from this time period a lot. Or at least he used to, so people always ask a big premium for these guys. 3000 bucks really isn't that bad. It looks like this one has some light players wear. Kind of hard to see what he's trying to photograph there. <laughs> but it doesn't seem to be in the, the worst shape ever. Like it even has some of the original case candy. I love that color from that angle. It almost looks like a, a vintage burst that's kind of darkened. I'd say if you're in the UK, that is a solid pickup, but at $400 shipping to get it back here, probably not worth it at that point. And just one last one for today. I know I said we were going to be done, but I've never seen this in my life. An ES Les Paul bass? I know about the ES LPs, but I didn't realize they did bass versions of it too. Like, they really extended those F-holes. It kind of looks bad like a cheap knockoff but okay at the same time are we sure this is real that looks oddly not right like even the headstock looks a bit goofy what is this okay so i think what's happening here why it looks so strange is they're using green screening technology or something very similar so they're removing the background and then they just have this like panel wood image that's why it just looks like the guitar is only moving. And sometimes when you do photography like that, like you can see where they're getting rid of the stand that's holding it in place right here. You can see the shadow right here, but they're losing the binding in that process. Like it's cutting it short. So it makes it look like a banjo neck. <laughs> my, my advice to the shop, I love what you're doing, but sometimes that just doesn't work as good as these types of photos good they do have just regular photos whenever it comes to selling a guitar i find the best way to do it is just take regular photos don't do anything fancy don't do any editing to them because you might not be accurately portraying the guitar like my videos yes i do do a little bit of color touch up like for the b-roll shots but generally everything else it's just as i shoot it because let's face it most of my review videos they get about forty thousand views how many people end up buying that guitar that i am selling maybe one and they see it in all different types of lighting situations but yeah this looks way better at this angle <laughs> nice all right troglodytes i hope you enjoyed tonight's episode don't forget to like comment and subscribe and we will catch you tomorrow on the next episode take care